Catherine Walters here of The Muted Raven. And welcome back to my channel, where I show you how to turn wire into beautiful things. Today, we're going to revisit some of the jewelry that we've made before, and we're going to learn how to antique it. All the pieces we've made so far are in copper, and while the natural um, patina that copper has is quite lovely, I like to help it along with a little liver of sulfur. It helps make the stitching pop. So just a quick uh, reminder of the things that uh, you've made already, if you've been working your way through the videos. One of the first things you learn how to do is how to make a wire wrapped loop, and then how to make a wire wrapped loop over a bead, and how to make ear wires. So we have a pair of earrings, that, uh, copper earrings, that we're going to antique today. You also have had a chance to make a length of Viking wire knitting and finish it off with the findings that you made. And the last uh, video was a project video in how to put Viking wire knitting in a frame. I made mine so I would need to have jump rings to attach it to um, uh, a cord or a chain. This is an old pendant that I made many, many years ago. And it illustrates how you, uh, the, uh, the other orientation for the bale that I mentioned in the uh, pendant video. So we're going to add it to the mix so you can see how it looks because it's a slightly finer wire than the one that we used. Anyway, liver of sulfur is what we're going to get into today. I'm warning you now, it stinks. Um, it is the rotten egg smell that uh, um, jewelers just love to hate. Anyway, uh, I'll meet you back at the kitchen sink. Okay, here we are at my sink. Um, I've uh, cleaned it out and uh, this is where I'm, what I'm going to be using for rinsing. Um, I'm using the Cool Tools Patina Gel. I have used the solid uh, crystal um, liver of sulfur before. What I find if you're not using a lot that the Patina Gel suspension actually um, works, I think uh, it's a little more convenient. So that's why I'm using it today, but I have used the crystal stuff in the past and it's fine. You only need to add a couple of drops to a glass bowl or a, a, um, a plastic bowl. And this water has been boiled. It's drinking water. It has been boiled, but I've let it cool a bit because I don't need it boiling hot. What's, oof, let me tell you what a fine aroma we've got going there. And what I do is I just put things in. And if I don't see any darkening happening fast enough, I can make a slightly stronger solution. Now your copper will start to darken fairly quickly. Um, but I like to let it get really good and black. That way, when I'm polishing afterwards, I can determine how much is going to be left on it. So we have to let that sit for a little while and then come back and we'll do some rinsing back in a few bits. Okay, so I added a couple of more drops because I wasn't pleased with uh, um, how fast things were moving along. But now when I look down into the bowl, all the pieces are quite dark. Now you take them out and you put them on um, the towel. I use a few pieces of paper towel to catch the uh, initial drips. and I just lay my liver of sulfur solution to one side. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the water and I'm gonna give this a wash with a little um, Dawn dish liquid. I'll, start, I'll make a lather in my hand, I'll give them a quick wash and then I'll move them back onto the paper towel. Then we'll move to the next step. So this will be noisy. The next thing we have to do is we have to dry the jewelry. And I am going to use a hair dryer for that, and I'll show you how in a second. Now that the uh, jewelry's been antiqued, we need to dry it. 
I have this ancient towel, which I, I actually have several like this that I've had for many years that I keep specifically for this purpose. The main reason it's helpful to keep your metal jewelry on a towel is because it helps keep your dryer from blowing it all away, especially with earrings. Um, the pile on the uh, towel actually helps. And, uh, but it's, it's really a simple matter of just passing the dryer over the metal back and forth, back and forth until it's dry to the touch. And be careful because that metal will get hot and if you grab it hard, you will burn your fingers. when I, I was uh, doing that I flipped everything over so I was able to um, get the dryer on it on both sides now if you gently put your hands right above it you'll feel the heat radiating from it so we're going to give this a minute or two to cool down and then I'll meet you back at my workbench where uh, we'll do some polishing see you in a minute so now we've finished antiquing our pieces the next step is going to be polishing uh, I want to walk you through uh, a, a, my polishing technique for wire knitting because it would be a shame at this stage if the polishing technique accidentally damaged your, your work. So the first thing I'm going to focus on actually is going to be this pendant. And pretty much whatever I'm doing for this would also work for that. It's important when you're polishing to support the piece fully with your fingers. This does mean that your fingers are going to get black, whether you use a jewelry polishing cloth, a pro polish pad like I'm using, or steel wool. But you can wash your hands afterwards and that will help protect your knitting. So I usually start up at the bail and with my fingers around uh, pushing up the jump rings, I start to polish in one direction. None of this vigorous moving back and forth stuff. You polish in one direction and you keep moving it around so you can slowly start lifting some of the black off. And you might say, well, we worked so hard to put that on. Why are we trying to get it off now? The smooth surface areas are exactly where you do want the um, liver of sulfur to come off. It's in the creases and where metal meets metal, you'll um, get some darkening remaining. And that's actually what you want to help make the stitches pop. Now I'm working on the back side of the pendant first and I'm supporting the frame and the knitting, I'm pulling from the center out to the edge. And I rotate the piece in my hand so I can keep repeating the same movement. And this is important because you do not want to distort that knitting, not after all the hard work that you've put in um, creating it. So the first thing that I do is I go over the front and the back. I give it a once over with the same technique, front and back. Paying particular attention to the edges of the frame because that's where you really want the shine to happen. You can alter the direction that you're pulling in, but you only polish in one direction at a time. So if you are wanting to work on the edge, it's a straight out from the center. If you're wanting to get at the knitting from the inside, in here, it's a simple pressing it down with your finger and look what we're taking off. So you keep polishing and polishing and polishing. That's our first pass. Now at this point, it becomes a matter of how much antiquing do you like? Uh, how much shine do you like? So I would leave this for a few minutes, go on to my other pieces, and then come back to it, hold it up in the light, maybe take it to a window, look at it, at it in daylight, and decide if I want to do any more. We changed the camera angle. Bear with us. Um, once you get past the clasp, you'll want to support pretty much everything as you're working. And again, you can either pull towards you or push away. It's your preference. But I start with the cuff and I work my way down. And then I'll go to the other end and I'll do the same. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is the overall technique that I use for the chain part. 
and then I, I'm probably going to stop it there and let you continue on doing this because once again you remove as much or as little of the antiquing as suits your personal preferences. So it's going to be much like the motion that we use when we're straightening wire. You And that's my oven going off. I think my other half will be getting to that. Um, you hold it at the cuff and you pull it through your steel wool polishing cloth or pro polish pad and you end up creating lines on your pro polish pad like that. And then I just switch the, the pad around a little bit and I gently pull. You're pressing enough so that there's good contact. You're not pressing so much that you compress the knitting. I go in one direction a couple of passes and then I go back holding the other end and by the cuff because again that's the sturdy part and I gently pull it through. And I will keep up this process until I get to a level of finish that suits my preferences. And when I come back uh, you'll see what my finished product looked like. So keep cleaning and I'll be back in a minute. 